Alberta's 2023 solar show. Today's session is called Solar PV Reuse and Recycling. Please note that we have enabled closed captioning for this presentation. You can turn the captioning on in your toolbar at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We will be recording this session and making it available on our website and YouTube channel following the show. My name is Heather McKenzie and I'm the Executive Director of Solar Alberta. I'd like to take a minute to acknowledge that I'm hosting you today from Amiskwichiwaskahagen, also known as Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, which is located on Treaty 6 territory and the homelands of the Métis Nation. Treaty 6 territory is the traditional gathering place and home of many Indigenous peoples, including the Papa Chase, Mehewak or Cree, Soto, Dene, Blackfoot and Nakoda Sioux, nations whose ancestors have cared for and nurtured these lands since time immemorial. We were delighted to have so many people register for this week and for this event. To start, I want to big, give a big thanks to uh, the City of Edmonton, uh, Change for Climate, for sponsoring the entire 2023 Solar Show, and the City of Calgary for sponsoring this particular exciting session today. We're really happy and grateful to have them once again as a sponsor. Today, we'll be hearing from Ed Guggenheimer, the CEO of the Alberta Recycling Management Authority. Following the presentation, there will be a question and answer period in which you can all participate. The entire session will wrap up in an hour. As this is an online conference and trade show, I would like to encourage you all to check out our online trade show during the week. We have listed on this slide and in the chat all the wonderful organizations who are participating in the trade show. To view their exhibitor booths, which include a listing of key solar related services, contact info and video introductions, please click on the link in the chat. During our formal Q&A period, we will be using Zoom Q&A for questions rather than the chat box. So please enter your questions in the Q&A section. Also, please click on the little thumbs up symbol to upvote questions you like. Before we move forward, we're just gonna do a quick poll to get a sense of who we have joining us today. Please take a minute to answer the question popping up on your screen now. All right, while some are doing the poll, I'm gonna encourage you to take a minute as well, pop your name, land acknowledgement, any con contact info you're comfortable sharing in the chat now and throughout the event. And hopefully folks can look you up on LinkedIn, email you and find ways to stay connected after the conference. All right, wonderful. We're gonna share those results. Looks like we've got quite a few industry folks with us today. That's great. Some solar curious and some students as well. A nice spread. So welcome everybody. Wonderful to see uh, you all today. All right. I think we can close out of the poll and just do a little intro to Solar Alberta. This is Solar Alberta's 32nd year of operation. We are a not-for-profit society that is dedicated to accelerating Alberta's transition to a just and sustainable energy future. We do so by advocating, educating, and serving as an industry and community hub for solar energy. Our membership is made up of over 360 individuals and businesses. To keep up to date on all our activities, please sign up for our newsletter at solaralberta.ca. We provide a number of services, including managing a solar directory through our website. In this way, we act as a bridge for installers, suppliers, and other solar related businesses to connect with their customers and clients. You can see a screenshot of the directory here on this slide and a link to it in the chat. In addition to our website services, we run a number of educational programs such as the solar show, this solar show, our seminar series, and a number of in-person and online networking events as well. Our next online networking event is for women and non-binary folks working or interested in working in the solar sector and related fields. We are hosting this on March 8th over the lunch hour to celebrate International Women's Day. And we're going to be hearing from the from Pembina, the Pembina Institute's Benu Jakumar about her experience at COP27 prior to our networking component. The registration link should be in the chat as well. Please note that our recordings of the 2021 and 2022 solar show sessions and seminars can also be found on our Solar Alberta YouTube channel. So if you want to flash back to the past when Ed Guggenheimer presented two years ago, you can go and check him out there. 
All right. In addition to some solar show workshops that are industry oriented, this spring we once again will be running a number of online courses for solar industry professionals and those transitioning into the sector. Our seven courses are online Tuesday and Thursday evenings on three to five nights over two to three weeks. You can register for all of our courses at the link in the chat. Recordings of these courses are also now available alongside our paid workshops in the new solar training videos section of our website. Want to take a quick, quick opportunity to encourage you to join Solar Alberta as a member. Uh, this week only, February 6th to 10th, you can purchase an individual or student membership with a 20% discount. Uh, the link for that is going in the chat as well. On April 5th, we'll be hosting our annual general meeting and I'd like to invite you to sign up as a member, attend and elect your new board. There are four vacancies to fill on the board this year and if you're interested in applying to serve, you can do so through our website until February 26th. We are happy to announce that moving forward, we are going to be recognizing a long time dedicated contributors to solar in Alberta by gifting them a free lifetime membership. If you are currently a Solar Alberta individual or business member, and if you know someone who has contributed significantly to the organization or the sector as a whole, please consider nominating them for this award. We've made the process quite simple and easy to do. We're gonna be accepting nominations until March 22nd and the award recipient will be announced at our AGM. And lastly, today we ask that you please consider participating in our 50-50 raffle. The raffle is about, uh, I think it's almost at 900 now and just two days left. On Friday, February 10th, I'm gonna be doing a draw live at 8 p.m. during our stories from solar sector workers and networking night. Additionally, please consider donating through the crowdfunding link in the chat. The government of Alberta is matching all donations made through this link until the end of the week. And now, without further ado, I am delighted to get this session underway by welcoming our sponsor, Lewis Percy, the Corporate Environmental Specialist for the City of Calgary, to join us. He's going to give us a little intro and rundown on what they're up to in Calgary, and then he'll be introducing our speaker today. Welcome, Lewis, and thank you for joining us, and thank you for your sponsorship. Okay, thank you very much, Heather. Um, hello, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today and to introduce this session on solar reuse and recycling. My name, as Heather said, is Lewis Percy, and I'm a corporate environmental specialist with the city of Calgary, working within climate and environment. Within climate and environment, I work specifically with the community energy program team. Um, we're dedicated to empowering Calgarians to face the challenges of a changing climate head on. So we design tools and we administer programs that help the community drive towards net zero emissions by 2050. And we want to build an inclusive, low carbon, clean and green city now for future generations. Acting now means that we avoid the danger of delaying climate action. Acting now positions the city, Calgarians, businesses and industry to further expand climate action toward our 2050 target. And the pro proliferation of solar energy in particular is a very key part of that. Um, during our last business cycle, Calgary City Council approved our 2023 to 2026 budgets, and we set the stage for the next 10 years to protect Calgarians and to lower our emissions profile. There are two programs and tools in particular that I'm, that I'm very proud of and I'd like to bring uh, to your attention today. Um, the first of which is the residential solar calculator. Uh, so we launched the residential solar calculator on calgary.ca this time last year. Um, it's an interactive tool um, for homeowners that estimates your home's solar potential and this accounts for your roof area, your slope, uh, adjacent structures and tree shading. It provides an estimate of the financial viability um, of solar on your roof, showing how much you can save on your electricity bill monthly, as well as your payback period for your investment. And also, of course, there's an emissions lens too. Uh, the tool shows you how many emissions you could save if you were to install solar um, on your roof. Uh, if you'd like to find out information, more information on this, please go to calgary.ca forward slash um, solar calculator, where you can use the tool uh, and try it out on your own home. The second program that I'd like to draw your attention to is the recently launched Clean Energy Improvement Program, or SEEP for short. Um, SEEP uh, offers flexible, low-cost financing for homeowners, 
um, completing energy efficiency and renewable energy projects on their home. So financing is provided by the city to homeowners. And this is usually at a rate lower than traditional financing products. Um, and it's then repaid through your property tax bill. The maximum financing amount um, through SEEP is 50,000 per property. And solar PV projects are eligible measures through this program, and they are repaid over the course of a 20 year period. The SEEP program, as I say, recently launched. It launched in January 31st of this year. And honestly, the uptake and the applications have been outstanding. Um, it's clear that Calgary was very ready for this type of programming from the city. Um, in fact, we had so many applications in the first two days, we've had to pause applications at this time um, so that we can catch up with the pre-approval process. The SEAT program will be reopening um, in the near future. Um, and please check out calgary.ca forward slash SEAT for more information on um, when that reopening will occur and the next round of applications. Uh, and with that, um, I'd like to segue on to today's speaker. Um, so today's speaker is uh, Ed Guggenheimer. So early in 2019, uh, Ed joined the Alberta Recycling Management Authority, ARMA, uh, as their chief executive officer, bringing over 27 years of experience with him in fiscal governance and management. Uh, his innate talent for strategic execution, financial, operational, and risk management, alongside his passion for building healthy organizational cultures, is leading ARMA in its continued success. One that requires foresight into emerging trends and innovations while balancing the need to guide and nurture its recycling partners, ensuring that Alberta leverages all opportunities for a sustainable and impactful recycling sector. Um, he's been in instrumental in launching the e-pilot expansion program and exploring new ways to manage aging solar panels, research and recommendations for the used oil expansion, and establishing a new governance model that has paved the road for being named the oversight body for extended producer responsibility. PR. Um, Ed has shifted the organization to a vision of inspiring a future without waste, which he passionately believes in. As Armour celebrates its 30th anniversary, it is focused on positioning Alberta's circular economy for the global stage. Ed is committed to leading with humor, a compassionate ear, and a tireless commitment to service. He holds a chartered professional accounting designation, calling Edmonton home with his wife, Leanne, and son, Addison. So I will now pass the mic over to Ed to begin his presentation. And welcome, Ed. There, can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes, you're all good. Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks for that, Lewis. Um, really appreciate the introduction and really appreciate Solar Alberta having me here today. As mentioned, my name is Ed Guggenheimer. And I've had the honor of serving as a CEO for the Alberta Recycling Management Authority for the past four years, and it's been a crazy four years indeed. April of last year marked the beginning of ARMA's 30th anniversary, and we salute the partnerships and strength and foundation upon which all our organization has been built and continues to thrive. So let me take a few moments to familiarize you with ARMA. ARMA acts on behalf of the province to oversee all aspects of end-of-life processing, electronics, paint, tires, used oil materials. We provide a high-level environmental stewardship that makes Alberta world, le world leader in the industry. We have proudly and responsibly managed some of the province's major recycling initiatives. Through this process, we've secured valuable relationships with multi-stakeholder board, four industry councils, over 5,300 registered producers and suppliers, and 27 recyclers in the province. Additionally, we have 157 municipal and indigenous communities who manage 440 paint, tire, and used oil material collection sites for us throughout the province. It equips Albertans to do the right thing and keep products out of landfill. In 2021 and 2022, so last year, our fiscal period, you know, we were able to recycle with our partners over 13,000 tons of electronics, almost 2.5 million liters of paint, over 650 units of aerosol cans, 66 tons of tires, over 78 million liters of oil, and almost 4 million kilograms of filters from the oil oil program. And right now we're getting close to 2 million in uh, kilograms of containers in the used oil program. 
Overall, Albertans have been able to recycle almost 11.2 million electronics since 2004. That's an amazing feat for our population. Over 31.5 million liters of paint since 2008 and over 137 million tires since 1992. And believe it or not, we can tell you it's the number of tires and not tons. That's the level of detail we go to. And the big number for us is over 1.9 billion liters of used oil. ARM embraces the principle of the circular economy, keeping resources and products in use for as long as possible. Then they're regenerated into new products and materials at the end of their life. That's sort of a mantra we have in this organization. We live our vision by inspiring a future without waste. And as a result of our history and responsibly managing these recycling programs, as was said earlier, uh, we were appointed by the government of Alberta, the Extended Producer Responsibility Oversight Authority in October of last year. This exciting opportunity actually helps us work on our mandate. We we'll helped create a standard for recycling two new product streams for the province, single-use products, packaging, and paper, we call it PPP, and household and hazardous special products. We're currently in transition period with the government at this point in time, and we're figuring out the next steps and surrounding EPR, including bylaws, which are the rules with which we're going to be putting forward to be able to manage those materials in order to help fulfill objectives and goals as an oversight body. As said earlier, in 2004, Alberta launched its first electronics recycling program in, in Canadian history. So we were the first ones, and I call us innovators for that. We were recycling computer equipment, TVs, and some office equipment. While we were initially a national leader in this front, Alberta is now last in terms of scope of electronics accepted in the programs. The e-pilot was created and launched in September of 2020 in order to collect really pieces of valuable data to expand the program. Currently, that e-pilot accepts over 500 different types of electronics, including solar panels. Information generated from this specific project has helped ARMA provide a strong recommendation to government for sustainable and expanded electronics recycling programs that will support jobs, of course, and further advance our circular economy. These recommendations are currently being reviewed by the province um, because technically our e-pilot completed or was terminated December 31st of 2022. But we recently received a ministerial order to continue the e-pilot, which means we can continue to do our study on solar panels so that Albertans can continue to divert electronics from landfill. When working on the e-pilot, we quickly realized that there was very little research done surrounding the recycling of solar panels, which was really quite disappointing for our organization. As part of our vision, we wanted to do more. We decided to include them into the program so we could learn more about the challenges they represent. I remember the first time we came to speak to you folks, it was early on, and we do have better information. We do understand the program a little better than we did in the past. With its sunshine and deregulated electricity market, Alberta has already attracted many solar power generating projects. And that, last, that list will continue to grow as more people and businesses look for alternative sources of electricity generation. For example, the 465 megawatt traverse solar project or the GP Jewel 22 megawatt solar plant, or even the River Valley uh, solar farm here in Edmonton, solar continues to grow. The provincial and federal governments offer financial incentives on a regular basis to develop these alternative solar energy, um, alternative energy uh, programs such as solar. But collectively, we really haven't figured out what to do with those panels when they reach the end of their life. In a recent article from the CBC, landowners and municipalities are concerned that with the adoption of renewal, renewable energy resources, there are also associated risks with not having plans on how to deal with these decommissioned pieces of infrastructure. It's specified that Alberta is currently home to 3,800 megawatts of wind solar capacity, of which 1,350 came online in the last 12 months. That's astronomical. An additional 1,800 of capacity is currently under construction. Their concern is that without plans and policies, Alberta could face similar problems to what has happened with other organizations in the energy field. 
With the increased adoption of solar energy, solar panels will become progressively a larger waste stream, not only for our province, but nationally and internationally. According to estimates by the International Renewable Energy Agency, PVs is one of the fastest growing renewable energy technologies and is playing an increasingly important role in global energy transformation. And you folks know that better than, than we do. We've also indicated that solar module prices fell by 93% between the years of 2010 and 2020. That's an astronomical economic impact. With these current trends, they're estimating that Canada alone could accumulate up to 800,000 tons of end-of-life solar panels by 2050. This number is astonishing and actually quite concerning. As we look to do what's right for the environment right now, we begin to create another problem down the road. The Canadian Renewable Energy Association, Canaria, indicates that solar panels are 90% recyclable by mass, with components being able to be reused, refurbished, or upcycled, and eventually recycled. Solar power systems consist of very recyclable materials, including copper and cabling and aluminum and racking, glass and electronic components. There are also precious metals such as silver, but the proportion of these materials has greatly been reduced over the past few years contributing, of course, to that solar's significant cost reduction. Once the glass and metal have been channeled into well-established recycling processes, there is very little mass remaining that requires special treatment. Unfortunately, Canada and many other countries are falling behind in how to handle and process these panels. And that's why it's important to look at having a solution before it becomes a huge problem and Heather in numerous conversations reminds me of that fact. Solar panels provide a valuable energy source but pose unique challenges for recycling. So some of the, some of the items that we've learned as we've started to manage recycling, uh, the recycling of solar panels is panels are typically large. So the transportation and storage, at least for recycling purposes, is more difficult. Broken glass and sharp metal pose safety concerns for handling of those materials. The layered construction of silicon plastics and metals are extremely hard to separate. So the more you do to make these panels indestructible, it makes it more difficult for us to destruct them. Wiring can pose issues for shredders and our pulverizers because they can get caught in the equipment and the knives, and it's a very expensive, time-consuming adventure to repair those pieces of equipment. Gauging recycling fees is also a challenge since the length of time from a purchase and installation to collection and processing of a PV is quite long. The lifespan is potentially 20 to 30 years. The fees we were, if we were to collect fees today, it would only be an estimate of what the cost would be to process those panels decades down the road. And we know even our current programs, three years down the road, it's difficult to estimate. Over the past two years, we've been working with Solar Alberta, the Nate Center for Grid Innovation, and a recycler of ours in the electronics field called High Tech Recyclers. We're examining the challenges and creating a recycling pilot. This continual process of learning, assessing, and trying new things has been great. Our current pilot collects panels from all across this province. These panels include decommissioned units from solar farms and units damaged during shipping or installation. And those average about three to 5% of all new panels. We've been working with Mark Shell, the president of High Tech Recyclers and Edmonton based, uh, and Edmonton based electronics processor. He's a great guy if you guys ever get the chance to meet him, uh, to have a place for temporary storage and testing of our collected panels. In the exploration stage of the e-pilot, Hitech attempted to take a panel apart, and it was next to impossible, almost, I, I saw him try and do it, almost impossible to remove the frame. It became apparent that the only way to process was to shred the panel. But due to various materials in the panel, the process and result wasn't ideal. 
you couldn't throw solar panel into a conventional shredder and make sure that things were safe and done properly. So far, just over 1,900 panels have been collected. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but for a province that really didn't look at collecting these in any way, shape, or format, 1,900 is a good number from our perspective. 1,200 of these initial collected panels were actually sent for recycling. Due to the lack of local infrastructure, it was also decided to wrap the panels and send them to a company called Cascade Eco Minerals in Ohio, a recycling processor that was capable of recycling solar panels. They had the equipment that was adequate to do this properly. Cascade Eco Materials focused on handling the panels properly so that materials could be separated and recovered with minimal damage and loss to the materials. The materials that came out of that process could be reused to manufacture new panels or other industrial applications such as pulverizing photovoltaic cells into really fine glass and almost a powder that can be used to create reflective paint in roadways. As we were collecting solar panels, we wanted to see what the capacities and capabilities were to generate electricity and whether there was even a possibility remote for redeployment and reuse of these panels, talking about our circularity. The panels that we uh, chose uh, were panels that showed no physical signs of damage. On average, a normal panel loses about a half a percent of efficiency per year, and that's something that you're all very well aware of. So as long as these panels weren't too old, chances are they were good enough for us to be able to test and have the potential to be reused. We worked with Darren Dunfield, a research lead at Nate's Center for Grid Innovation. We asked him to develop a testing system that would be cost-effective and as simple as possible to perform a test on these solar panels. Currently, to minimize cost, the panel itself is actually strapped into a stand as a multimeter and it has an iPad to process data and it communicates uh, with the iPad. The stand is sort of placed in the sun when we have sun and the panel tested to see the output and overall performance of the panel. Based on these results, we were able to determine the performance levels of each panel and see if they were still a viable option for reuse. We still have a going bet in the office as to how many will be able to be used for reuse. The process is simple and effective, but requires manpower. It's somewhat inefficient. It costs time for our recyclers, time that they could be earning funds doing their regular day job. The panel has to be man uh, manually handled. It has to be hooked up. It has to be tested. It has to be assessed. We also need to have much mother nature willing to work with us and make sure we have a day of sun when we're going to test these panels. And it's not always the easiest thing when you're working um, at your regular day jobs. Of the panels we have been able to test, we are seeing that many still retain a good percentage of performance and could still be used as an effective means of electricity generation. But since they aren't performing to industry standards, they're being discarded and replaced by newer models. Unfortunately, the panels that are deemed as reusable cannot be generated, can, sorry, unfortunately, the panels that are deemed as reusable cannot generate electricity for provincial grids due to certification and insurance issues. Arma is currently figuring out a way to offer them to those off-grid at this time. As an example, municipalities to light their isolated recycling depots or to farmers to help power their water pumps. This is one way they can still be used and they can help serve a need in a community. Our goal is to make Alberta the first province in Canada to create a recycling program for solar panels. By including this material stream in regulation and position Alberta as leaders in the electronics recycling space. This would also help to bring new business to the province and create jobs. The pilot is helping us understand the challenges and the best way to test and handle material. As I mentioned earlier, we had to, we had expected our e-pilot to end December 31st, 2022. But the pilot has been extended, so we're able to continue with this work. Processes needed to establish and streamline panels 
must be established so we can rapidly test panels as they come in and are identified that they can be refurbished or reused. We need the ability to build a stronger and better test bench, one that can test panels more efficiently and allow for faster hookup and analysis of data. We also need to have an artificial light source that testing is consistent and we don't have to rely on a warm sunny day outside the back of a, a parking lot. This has delayed many of the tests since cold temperatures, of course, won't permit the doors to be open in the warehouse. We also need to create guidelines. This is a very important uh, step when it comes to recycling any form of material. Guidelines and best practices associated with decommissioning and reuse. Creating a standard of certification that can be applied and recognized by authorities for reuse and deployment. What we've also identified is that pre-screening processes need to be revamped and improved. Many of the panels that showed no real signs of damage on closer inspection ended up having damaged wiring or harnesses that were removed. And so this will be one of the takeaways I'll ask of this, of this group watching today. This greatly reduced the number of panels suitable for testing from what we had estimated to 130 of the 700 panels in the second batch that we assessed. So those harnesses become really, really important for us to be able to do our testing. This was actually quite a disappointment for our team and posed a further challenge since they were originally flagged for testing and put aside in storage, only later to be deemed unusable. I remind you, our staff are not specialists in solar, so we weren't exactly sure what we were looking for until the specialists came in. Ideally, what we'd like to be able to do is have the recycling capacity within Alberta but unfortunately, even with decommissioned or damaged units, there's currently not enough feedstock to justify the purchase of the equipment that is capable of performing end-of-life services for recycling in Alberta. As an example, a pulverizer can be an investment of over a million dollars. And of course, that's a struggle if there's not enough feedstock to feed the pulverizer on a regular basis. So what are we doing about that? We're reaching out to our neighbors and British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba to gauge their interest in collecting their old panels and recycling them here, so that we could make this a viable collection stream in the future. We are also in the process of bringing back the Solar Recycling Working Group. This group met last in 2021, and we want to bring this group back as soon as possible to help guide us in our next steps in brainstorming for some ideas in 2023 and 2024. And the only reason we can bring this group back is because we had an extension on our e-pilot, which allows us the funding to continue to do our work. We continue to learn. We look to you to help us spread the word on our efforts and provide guidance to those in the industry. If you know of anyone that's looking to get rid of panels or find a solution for the panels that they've uh, taken down and are uncertain of what to do, please direct them to us so we can advise on how to properly dispose of those panels. The contact information is shown on your screen. Panels that are undamaged should also be handled with care to help them remain in an undamaged way through the collection and testing process. Harnesses should not be removed or cut, so we're able to actually test the, the um, panels when they come in. As we continue our work through these stages of collection and testing, we will collect and analyze the data and be able to provide further recommendations so that an Alberta-made solution can be created on the recycling and reuse of these valuable materials. And we wanna ensure that they don't end up in a landfill. We all know that this waste stream will only increase as more panels reach their end of life. And we're all about future waste streams in this organization. But we'll be one step ahead of other recycling efforts in other jurisdictions. So, with that, um, I thank you. Uh, it concludes my presentation, and I guess uh, I guess we welcome any questions that you may have at this point in time. Awesome! Thank you so much, Ed. That was a really informative presentation. Um, I'm just going to step in for Heather for the Q and A part of the webinar. Um, Everyone, please, you've been doing so already, but please add your questions to the Q&A part of the Zoom instead of the chat. And uh, Ed, we'll just go through the, the ones that have the most outvotes. For So our first one is from Joel. 
is it possible to purchase decommissioned solar panels? If they were cheap enough, it would pay to install them on a house, even if they are less efficient than the newer ones. You know, at this time, we haven't talked about the purchase or sale of these solar panels, the ones that we find that are actually reusable. Um, given the fact that we're a non-for-profit organization, probably seems a little out of out of the ordinary to be actually, actually able to sell one of these panels. Uh, so I think what we'll probably do first is 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 put them up in, in areas to test them out to figure out what the length and longevity is. Again, we can't warranty these items. Uh, we don't have installers and you know, we would probably reach out to this community once we get the program off the ground to help us find installers to know how to do this properly. But at this point in time, we're not looking towards uh, selling these panels. And I think it's a it's a great idea. We'll, we will take it back though. Yeah, for sure. Maybe hopefully in the future. And then <laughs> Solar yeah. Alberta can definitely help out with the outreach for that and, and notifying people that they can be purchasing these. For sure. Awesome answer. Um, our next question is from Gordon Howell. How are you relating to established PV recyclers in other parts of the world? I think you had mentioned Cascadia in Ohio, but um, have you been working with any other companies or recyclers? It's a good question. Um, we were looking for a solution that was fairly immediate. Uh, we knew our we, we knew we had a finite amount of time to work on this e-pilot. And so when we talked about Cascades, we were looking for the quickest and, and uh, closest solution, because again, we do not want to be transporting uh, solar panels all the way across Canada uh, for others looking for other recycling facilities. This was the facility that made the most sense in this instance. Um, but I, I will tell you that there is a business case to be had for um, putting this equipment here in the province and having somebody manage it. Uh, because the lion's share of the costs associated with recycling these PVs was actually just transportation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Big modules, like you were saying, that's a yeah. that's definitely a huge challenge of of recycling them. Is is how big the modules are, and right. and even just transporting them within the province for sure. Awesome. So our next question is from Kevin. How should we fund this recycling system? Deposit on panels, some kind of EPR standard for manufacturers. If you have any ideas, I know that we're quite far away from doing that, but. <laughs> you know, um, it's a really good question because uh, quite frankly, our organization has been managing stewardship programs. So an eco fee goes into a fund, it sits there and, and, and accumulates and grows in value. And then when the material comes back, specifically electronics, that happens on a regular basis because electronics don't come back until an average of 10 to 11 years later. Um, you know, so establishing that fund, that eco fee fund, may not make sense in in, in this instance. Um, but given the new EPR framework that has come out in the province, I think that might make more sense uh, because uh, it, you know the ability to manage the waste at a more opportune time when the waste is coming back to the stream might make more sense. But we haven't really given it a lot of thought uh, as to whether this should be an EPR program or a stewardship program. My sense would be this probably feels more like an extended producer responsibility uh, program than, than a stewardship program, the, the conventional stewardship programs you see in Alberta. Awesome. No, that's great to know. And yeah, definitely still a lot of work to be done with the actual recycling part of it as well until that, um, and still working on the pilot program for sure. Right. Awesome. So next question from Guy. How or who do we speak to you about getting involved? I'm doing some recycling of modules and equipment, and I would like to be more involved if possible. So earlier we had a, um, a screenshot of our contact information. If you have any questions whatsoever, please contact us at that, at that number. Uh, and we have an info at uh, email address you can use. Please send them our way. Uh, the more questions we get, the more information we have, and the, the better are we able to, to make adjustments to our program. So yeah, if there's interest in, you know, setting up a recycling facility, you know, there's there's all sorts of options for you, so. For sure, and uh, Scott, would you be able to throw the contact info in the chat as well? People can have it there, just in case they didn't write it down before. Our next question is, my grid tied garage has three damaged panels with 300 watt optimizers. Am I allowed to replace these with used panels after confirming dimensions and max power, et cetera? That is way too technical for a guy who <laughs> recycles panels. Um, 
I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have a clue as to how to answer that, but I can take that back to the team and, and see if they've they've have any insight on, on answering that question. Yeah, for sure. And I think maybe something to consider then would be the certification of the use panels, like you were saying earlier, um, because it is grid tied. So checking that out with your solar installer would probably be the first bet. <laughs> would be my first bet. The the other thing is, and, and I think we're working with Stantec, I think that's the next step in building those certifications and requirements for solar um, recycling. So more to come on that this year um, as we come up with those specifications for recycling. For sure. Yeah, and, um, and the ARMA link is in the chat now for the contact. So again, feel free to, to reach out to them. Uh, our next question, the most upvoted again, Gordon Howell. I am surprised that you say that the lifetime of solar PV module is 20 to 30 years. What happened to the 25 and 30 year warranties where the PV modules are still working 80% as good as new as those times? And that 40 year old PV modules are typically working better than expected. Um, do you have any comments on? I think, yeah, you had said 20 to 30 years in, in the presentation, but that's just like a typical a typical lifeline that you're seeing. It is a typical lifeline. If we take a look at the panels we've received, uh, I think uh, when upon inspection, that seems to be what we're getting into the program now. So I would assume the reason that they seem shorter today is because we're, we're taking panels that have been in the system already for a great number of years. So that's that delay. I'm sure panels today probably last much longer than the panels of yesteryear. That would be my assumption. But again, I'd have to go take a look at some of the data that we've done to collect on, on the panels we've already received. For sure, yeah. And that would, yeah, that would definitely be an interesting output of the pilot program is to see the average age of the, of the panels. Yeah, awesome. We do collect and, that data. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> and okay, yeah, we have a question here. How do we define end of life? New panels have higher watt density per panel than older models. Um, so for example, a, a 2023 20, panel, let's say at 500 watts per panel will be much higher after 25 years than a 315 watt per panel system after 25 years. So should the end point not be defined by a minimum watt per panel output rather than a set time? I think, do you have Absolutely. any comments on just, yeah, how you define end of life? Absolutely. Um, a part of the definitions and the requirements for end of life uh, will probably be coming through the study. So what is actually determined as end of life? And that comes through the specs and, and specifications uh, that we're going to be looking at through Stantex work. Uh, the concept here would be, um, you know, if there is any form of, like what we're doing here internally is if there's any form of life left on these things, um, let's use use whatever we've got left. So again, that standard has yet to be determined and that's what the next phase of this is going to look at. For sure, yeah, and I, I'm sure that that would be driven by whatever programs are in place to reuse these and what kind of percentage of their efficiency that they want to actually have before putting in the work to install them again and stuff, right? Yeah, I, I, what I think will probably happen throughout this year is, um, you know, as we go through the study, we'll probably be reaching out to um, solar experts and installers, et cetera to make sure that we've got the standards right. And, and maybe there are different standards for different vintages or different uh, um, um, quality type panels. And again, it's not we're not solar experts here, um, but maybe it's a sliding type of scale on what end of life looks like. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, our next question, I feel a little confused about, but maybe you'll understand. So if you added reuse solar panels to an existing rooftop system for your own, house and export excess to the grid, how would you decide which electrons are being exported? Interesting. Again, I, I think our, our, our take on this was we would supply these reused panels at this point in time to those that were off grid entirely. I, I think we're staying away from, from formal installations at this point in time because it is a pilot. I don't think we have the silver bullet on, on how we put this back into the, into the system or on the grid. So again, we, our reuse program was was limited to you know to like I said, voluntary organizations that had no source of power, and we and you know, whether it be water pumps for for farmers or whether it be uh, lights or or just charging stations at landfill sites. For sure, yeah, definitely at the point right now that they're not connected to the grid. 
we're not there yet. Yeah. That, that's, that's a few steps down the road. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> um, next question. How are you learning from the International Electrotechnical Commission and the huge work that they are doing in developing solar PV standards for the past 40 years? I can't really answer that question. I'd have to talk to the team that's working on the on the program. And unfortunately, uh, they're busy in an electronics industry council meeting today. So you're getting <laughs> me instead. Okay. But we can take that back and, and that'd be a question that we could, we could come back if we have some answers for you. So for sure, yeah. We'll Thanks, Gordon, for that question. Maybe shoot them a, a message on their contact page. Um, there's someone who asked, I, I might have missed part of this during the presentation, but what is that 10% of panels that can't be recycled? Is it plastic components or a variety of materials? If you'd just be able to restate that. They're, they're damaged. Well, we haven't been able to test certain panels because of the harness has been ripped off or cut off, um, or there's actually physical damage to the, to the solar panel itself. And so when we see that, we see there's no opportunity at that point in time to repair that. And uh, so those become end of life and go in for um, you know, mechanical recycling. Awesome. Um, just reading through more questions about end of life. Um, I feel like we definitely talked a lot about that. Um, yeah, those specifications are yet to be determined. I mean, what's to say that this panel can't be used for some form of application, you know? Um, and again, we're looking at really simple applications at this point in time. Uh, we're not looking at fairly complex installations. We, mm -hmm. we have some crazy ideas even, you know, we, we kick these ideas around and again, they're ideas, but you know, you've got Goodwill Alberta and do, does amazing things and they, they, they manage their energy extremely well why couldn't we find someone to help us put some of these panels together and see what kind of reduction we could have in their power bills? I, I like there's there's a there's a, a number of different ways we can we can look at these panels, but minimum recycling requirements is going to be different than than the Reeves program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, there's a comment here that it's uh, it's important that Arma is is actively engaging the solar PV experts across Canada. You did mention a few companies, but um, are there more ideas to involve like installers or PV manufacturers in the next stages of the pilot program? Absolutely, that, that working group that we had with us uh, in the first phases of the um, e-pilot working on, on our solar panels, uh, we, we kind of wound that down um, just because we knew the e-pilot was coming to a close, but now that the e-pilot's back on, we, we'd like to, to bring that back and actually have volunteers uh, interested in, in helping us take the next steps, whether it be installers, whether it be anyone in this group. Again, we don't know what we don't know. We're, we, we, we manage recycling programs. We're not solar experts. So mm -hmm. having solar experts on that working panel would be absolutely fabulous. And again, you got that contact information if you're interested in helping us out. For Long sure. <laughs> yeah, everyone with, with big ideas in the chat. Um, yeah, reach out to them. <laughs> They're asking for your feedback. And just on the topic of the pilot program, um, can you talk a little bit more about um, if it's been ex extended? How long scope? Did you get more money? No, so how, how the pilot, well, let me step back. Yes, it's been extended. The pilot went from a December 31st, 2022 end date it now goes to uh, March 31st, 2024. So we actually have an, another year and some uh, to continue to do our work. How that program was funded, it was a $43 million pilot project and was supposed to take over two years. So far, we've expended about half of that. We've expended close to $20 million on, on managing those materials. Those kind of funds actually went to help meet build the test bench and it's it's helped our processors in, in managing and building establishing new supply chains and the ability to recycle materials. Um, so that funding actually came from our electronics fund. So as an organization, we collect those eco fees and they've been accruing over the years. And uh, due to lightweighting and due to the fact that you know it takes a longer time for electronics to come through, 
um, we had some additional funds that we could earmark for this type of research. So it's not like we're using um, additional funds. It was always earmarked inside that, that pilot. We just haven't used all the funds that were available at that time. Good question. Awesome. Yeah, and I think that kind of answers. We had a question that says, do you pay or charge for the for recycling the modules? And it seems like so far that that has been part of that um, research fund in the recycling program. Yeah, absolutely. Anything that was included in the pilot for the last two years, and I guess it will be three and a little bit years in total, uh, is free for Albertans to bring in. That's the way we looked at it. Perfect. And and in terms of extension, um, do you see this ex expanding? How do you see this expanding in the future in terms of your funding? Well, my hope, my hope is that the province looks at our, our proposal and it expands the electronics program in a fulsome way. Uh, we have made a recommendation that, you know, we should look at solar and a panel on its own. Uh, but we also know that our current recycling program, our current recyclers would have the ability, that's part of the test, would have the ability to actually recycle these materials if we went through that, that program as well. But those are decisions for government to make. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, see a question here saying, how do we join the ARMA working group? And it seems like reach out to them um, via the, the URL that they put in the chat. I'm just trying to find it right now. AlbertaRecycling.ca slash contact dash ARMA. Um, or is there a better way to, to reach out? We also have an info at Alberta Recycling as well. Perfect. So yeah, it seems like just reach out and uh, and you'll be facilitating a bunch of comments and, and feedback from industry professionals. That'd be fabulous. I mean, that's the one thing that that limits us is we just don't have a knowledge, working knowledge of, of solar. We're, we rely on you uh, to help us out with those, with that piece of our, our recycling program. Awesome. Um, seems like we just have some dialogue going on in the Q&A right now. Oh, perfect. Inquiries can be sent to info at albertarecycling.ca. So perfect. Send those along. Um, is there any, I just, I'm seeing some dialogue about the current codes and regulations. Um, I wonder, have you seen any development in actually getting like the reuse panels like recertified and like being able to be connected to the grid? Are you doing any work in that regard? No, I think, I think it's important to understand if we even get uh, the volume required uh, to be able to even put up you know, small installations at this point in time. So I think it's, I think it's too soon to answer. I think we need to figure out a few more pieces before we can go down that road. And quite frankly, um, you know, if we find that that the volumes coming through that have a high recycling or reusable um, content, I think that would be the next step in the process. Okay, well, we've, we, you know, whatever the percentage is of reusable panels, um, you know, how, how do we handle it? How do we get them recertified? How do we actually use them? Uh, in some way, shape, or form, that's not going to be on a farm, or it's not going to be at a a landfill somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's too sure. too early to, to answer that one. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, if anyone has any more questions, feel free to throw them into the Q and A. I I do have a question. Um, wondering, we haven't touched on batteries at all, but I'm wondering what what kind of programs are in place for battery recycling, and especially as we're seeing like. Um, I don't know how many years batteries have been involved in solar systems on homes, but like residential systems. Um, is there any thought into that? Is that going to be incorporated into the pilot program on reusing or recycling those batteries? So um, at this point in time, we haven't considered the recycling of those specific batteries. I do know that the province, I, we alluded to it earlier, has an HSP EPR program that's coming out, but it, it's predominantly for residential use batteries only. I can tell you, so that program would be probably uh, operational in 2025, uh, but that's, these batteries, my assumption is, are not included in that program. Our current recycling uh, program um, takes embedded batteries through through recycling process and they do manage uh, that end of life in, 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 in their own ways. Um, there has been conversations about what to do with the larger batteries from a solar or, or uh, lead acid battery uh, content 
methodology, but right now there's nothing formal that I've seen from the, the province on, on building a, a program for that. And it's a little bit yeah. out of the electronics space, whereas the panel is a little bit more in that space because we get we get all the, the smaller thin film panels already in our electronics program, we recycle them as well. So not at this point in time. Perfect, but yeah. That, that okay. is a future waste stream as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I can remember from your presentation a couple of years ago, um, there was another speaker there. I can't remember who they were, but life they cycle, were talking. I think it was life yeah. cycle. I think they were talking about reusing um, batteries as well. That was that component of it, yeah. for sure. Um, and then I don't, I don't remember if you touched on it in your presentation, but would you be able to give us a quick overview of, of um, how other provinces and or areas in, within Canada are, are recycling solar panels or if they're doing anything about that? Well, you know, I, I probably can't comment on that specifically, but when we first started this pilot project, uh, we did uh, reach out to counterparts across the, the country to see if they were looking at panels. We do know that um, in other other jurisdictions, the, this group called the, uh, the EPRA, which kind of do the same thing we do here in Alberta and they do it for other provinces, we have heard that they're looking into uh, including solar panels potentially in the program there, but that's at this point anecdotal. Oh, okay, and EPRA is is national or is it? Yeah, they would be a national pro. Uh, in Alberta, we're a little different. We're, we're um, part of a different type of system when it comes to recycling electronics. Uh, so the EPRA, um, and I got the acronym here, but uh, they operate and run electronics programs in the other provinces, not Alberta. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, too too late in the in the session to get into the, all the nuances of the of that policy, but <laughs> not that. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Um. Yeah, that's incredible. That lots of lots of good words about. Um, it's great to see, Arma's focus and and that you're actually doing this and and thank you for all your work and all your team's work and I think we'll we'll end the session now just uh. Two minutes early but let everyone get back uh finish up your lunch and, and <laughs> get back to your day but thank you so much ed and and to the team for presenting today for us and we really appreciate the update especially after your last presentation and um yeah look forward to continuing uh your pilot and and whatever way that we can help out with at solar alberta and and everyone from solar installers to manufacturers, how they can help out as well. So great to see it. <laughs> it's been awesome. Thanks for having me again. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm hoping that the next time we chat, we'll have a lot more definitive information because we'll have gone through a lot more panels and testing and hopefully we can get other provinces to participate. Uh, hopefully we'll have some specifications on, on our programs, but Haley, really appreciate the time, really appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone.